Welcome to another tutorial on Vinyl Web 2.0. In this video, we will take a look at the properties and uses of the Plain Text section, the Headings section, the Tabs section, and the Expandable Text section. We will begin with the Plain Text section. In the tutorial on working with text in Vinyl Web 2.0, we learned how to edit text using a Plain Text section, so we will go ahead and go right to the section properties. To do so, mouse over the section and click the small gear icon on the right that says Section Properties. This will pull up a menu on the right for the section. While we do not have anything under the Properties tab for this section type, we do have something under the Layout Settings tab. It is worth noting that adjusting these settings only applies to the currently selected template, so if you decide you want to switch the template of your website later on, you may need to come back and adjust some of these again. If you do not switch templates, you don't need to worry about that, though. This first part of the layout settings allows you to adjust the background. Just like with groups, you can use a color, an image, or a video as a background for a plain text section. For colors, you can use either a solid color or a color gradient. I will demonstrate with a solid color. Click here to select a color. We'll choose this red. Once I've selected a color, I can change the opacity of the background color with this slider here. As you can see over in the section, it will update live. You can also choose to use a background texture, but I would not recommend this for most text sections. Using textures is rarely needed for a clean, professional web page, and it can reduce the readability of text sections. This slider here will allow you to add some padding to your text section. This is especially useful when your text section is right up against another type of section. Text Shadow is also an option for text sections, but I would recommend against using it for most text sections. Text Shadow is more useful for headers, so I will demonstrate how to use it in the heading part of our tutorial. Finally, we have the option to use animations. In general, animations should not be used for the same reasons that background textures should not be used for text sections. It can look cheesy and make the text less reader friendly. With that, we have wrapped up plain text sections. Now we will take a look at the heading section. We'll go ahead and add the heading section to our group. Now we can double click it and edit it just like with text sections. In this template, the heading section comes with a main heading and a subheading in two different fonts by default. Just like with regular text sections, selecting a portion of text will bring up the text editing toolbar, where you can modify your text the same way as discussed previously. We'll go ahead and switch out this default heading for one of our own. Now if you feel like the subtitle is unnecessary for your heading or you just don't like it, don't worry. All you have to do is select the subtitle and delete it just like you would any other text. When we save our heading, the section will shrink to accommodate for the missing subtitle so that there is not as much blank space below the main heading. Now we'll take a look at the heading section properties. Once again, we will click on the gear icon to bring up the section properties menu. Like with the plain text section, there is nothing under the Properties tab, but there is under the Layout Settings tab. First, we have the option to add Text Shadow. For headings, I think a good Text Shadow setting is a horizontal and vertical offset of 2, along with a blur radius of 6. This will add a nice soft text shadow to the heading that isn't jarring, but is certainly visible. If you want to adjust the blur radius, you can do so with this slider to make it more or less crisp. 
you can change the color of your text shadow here, which can be useful if your group background is something other than white. Just like with plain text sections, we have the option to use animations, but once again, it is something that will rarely be needed for headings. Upon clicking the Save button, our changes will be saved and we will have finished looking at headings. Okay, so now it's time to take a look at the tab section. As always, we need to add the tab section to our group. You will see that the tab section is added with a default of three tabs. If you click through in the icons above, you can see that content will change according to the tab. To edit the content found on a tab, simply double click on the section after clicking on the tab you would like to edit. From here, the content can be edited just like any other text section. Make sure to save your changes when you are done. Clicking on the Section Properties gear, we see there are several settings to modify under the Properties tab. Changing the tab height will make the tab section display at a minimum of that height. If the content in a tab requires the section to be larger, it will scale accordingly. This tab style option allows us to change from using the default icon-like buttons to using bar-like buttons instead. Now we can take a look at some of the settings that will apply to a specific tab. Over here, we can choose an image to display as the background for a specific tab, just like we can choose a background image for a plain text section or a group. You have the three options here of uploading a local file, using an image already on the website server, or searching for a file in the stock library. I'll choose an image already on the server. Now we can see the image has been added as a background in the settings, but we cannot see the image yet over here on the tab section itself. This is because the color overlay opacity is set to 100%, hiding the image behind it. Simply taking the slider down a bit will reveal the image. If you would like a different color overlay, you can choose a color by clicking here. This button here allows you to select a tab icon from the list of icons we provide. As you can see, there are quite a few icons, including social media icons, to choose from. Choosing an icon from this list will change what is displayed in the button for that tab. This text box here allows you to change the title of the tab. You can modify these settings for each tab, allowing you to customize the background, icons, and title of each individual tab to your liking. Adding a tab is as simple as clicking this button here. Clicking the Arrange Tabs button will bring up a window where you can click and drag the tabs to fit whatever you order you would like. If the content does not update with the tab headers, you may need to refresh your page after saving. There are no layout settings for the tabs section so we can save our changes and be done. Finally, it is time to look at the expandable text section. These sections are very useful for text that you want to organize under different headings or main points. Common uses are a FAQ page or a constitutional statement with different articles. When we add a new expandable text section to our group, we can see that it gives us a heading that we can click on to reveal the text section for that heading. Double-clicking on this text area will allow you to edit the text like any other section, so we will pass on talking about that again and move on to the section properties after adding a little bit of content. Taking a look at the section properties, the first thing we see here is a list of headings. 
This is where you would want to put in your questions for an FAQ or the article number for a Constitution document. To add more headings, simply click on this button here. This selector brings up four different styles for the expandable text section. We have the accordion, which is the default, information, basic, and accordion minimal. You want to click through those and see which is best for your site. These four settings deal with the colors of the section. Taking a look at this first setting, we can see that it allows you to change the color for the heading. If we change the heading hover background color, it will change the color that displays when your mouse is hovered over a heading, like so. The heading open background color is similar, but it displays a, the color whenever you have a particular heading opened, granted that your mouse is not hovering over the heading. This text background color will change the background color for the text just like other text sections. This checkbox that says allow multiple headings to be expanded at once can be toggled on and off. By default, clicking on a different heading will minimize the previous text area at the same time as opening up the text area for the heading you click on. If you toggle this checkbox on, clicking on a different heading will not close the previous heading's information. This slider will allow you to change the font size of the headings like so. And this select box can change the style of the headings a bit, depending on your website's template. Not all templates will cause changes whenever you select different options on this element type. As with the tab section, there are no layout settings. So we simply need to save our changes and we're done with expandable text sections.